Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you're welcome here. I was the white motorcycle policeman. I remember feet. I'm a policewoman. Do not come near me. That's right. And we had a blast. <laughs> we always had we always had fun with the with the task force. It was oh always my nice. gosh! That was like our yearly reunion. It was. <laughs> and I'd was. say, do you catch drunk? I don't have time for drunks. I'm out here, well, like you said, educating families yes. <laughs> and helping mediate yeah. family crisis. Yeah, you got to mediate. You're that third party that has to come in sometimes and help control the situation. So for those of you who don't know, the town of Paradise Valley is one house per acre. Their house is averaging eight. And there's one at 46,000 square feet, one at almost 50,000. The average is about 14,000 square feet. The Fortune 100, according to Forbes magazine, has at least 80% of the Fortune 100 have a winner representation in this town, mm -hmm. which is, for me, a Libra. You're a Libra, too. It's I, beautiful to look at. Yes. It's a beautiful place to be. Probably not fun for somebody that came out of Gwinnett. It was a little slower from what I was used to. Gwinnett County, uh, at the time when I was there, is about was about 650 officers, so pretty pretty big. Um, those of you who know how big the city of Phoenix is, my county was that big. So that's a Phoenix is a big city, but Gwinnett was our our largest county in in the state. So it was a little slower. It, it was a little slower. Um, and actually, how I ended up even considering Tempe was I went to an ABLE conference, which is an organization here. Uh, it's the Arizona Black Law Enforcement Executives. I, me and Nigel went to a conference, and, you know, I met officers from all over the valley, and there were majority black officers there. So me coming from a black city, I'm like, wow, this, this is like all the black people in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> in I, one I, room. I, I didn't know. But I, I met some really good officers that I have relationships with still to this day. And um, just in going to some of those meetings and going to some of those trainings, I'd heard about Tempe. And I said, hey, you know, I, I, will, I will give it a try. And I applied for Tempe. And they were like, hey, what's up? Come on over. So I've been there for... November 9th will mark 10 years I've been with the city of Tempe. And they're fortunate to have you. I hope so. <laughs> so you, you touched on the ABLE, the group. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'm going to get the phrase wrong. I wrote it down, and, of course, it's probably in a plastic bag somewhere. I was talking about groups for officers, support groups, or ways to, to network mm -hmm. that revolve around race. Mm -hmm. yes. And then somebody mentioned the president recently having – the African American black community, those influencers and those folks at the White House, and they said they were did not happy with uh, race identified politics or groups. And I, and I beg to differ because just watching law enforcement, watching people in the military, the public will interact with you differently mm -hmm. as a black female than they will with me, mm -hmm. and, and vice versa. People will act fine with you <coughs> and completely go off on me. So mm -hmm. I understand that support structure, and not only is there that group. I'm going to try to count. You have probably been to, well, you guess. How many of these conferences have you been to in the last, let's, let's go last year. Last year? Um, at least three. At least three conferences. Because I, I, in um, August, I went to New Orleans for the Noble National Conference, which is the national organization of black law enforcement executives. Um, myself and my, my zone partner who was involved, we were both involved in a critical incident in October, last October, we received an award there. And the networking there, I mean, there were officers from all over the world. There was at least 3,000 people at, I mean, including, including vendors and stuff, but 3,000 people at this hotel attending this conference. And the networking was just phenomenal. You know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, rather you're from a big city or you're from a, a small town, just to talk to people and see how policing differs from place to place was 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 very nice and it was humbling. Could you name like um, you know you don't have to come like th what are the takeaways that a, a black peace officer that crossed all those spectra from all across the country? What are the three top issues facing, if there are any? Um. <clears throat> well. Like you said, just it, public interaction. 
Uh, I, I tell people sometimes I feel like uh, being black in a uniform can be a double-edged sword because either when you show up on the call, either you're going to be that person's best friend or because you're black in a uniform, whether it's blue, tan, whatever other color uniforms there are out there, you're the enemy, just like that. Um, so it, 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 can be, it can be very challenging at times, but it's all in how you decide to handle it. And, you know, some departments... It, uh, that some people that I've I've spoken to over the years, as far as being a person of color, you know, not just being black, but a person of color within their organization, sometimes the issue is inside their organization, de depending on where where it is you you live. So and that's rough because that's dealing, a reality too. We have to talk about that. Yeah, and dealing with internal stuff, and you can attest to this. Dealing with internal stuff can be worse than dealing with the people in the public. Because you need a safe space to come back you do. to. You do, and you need to feel like the people at work have your back. But, you know, and it just it just depends on your department. It depends on what your support looks like, what your command staff look like, looks like, and what you yourself as an officer are willing to put out on the line to make sure you are treated fairly. You know, my grandfather, uh, the late Earl S. Bolden, said, a closed mouth don't get fed. Amen. So if you don't open your mouth and say exactly what it is you need, then nothing's going to change. Uh, something I mentioned at a, um, a session that I went to at the Noble Conference, they were talking about changing the culture within your – well, it, it, was a, it was talking about Starbucks was, was on a panel, and they were just talking about – Oh, somebody from Starbucks came? Mm-hmm. Was, they were, was this after the Tempe incident? Yeah. Oh, wow. But th this was mainly talking about using Starbucks as a third place, like as a place for the community and to, the community to come together. Rather, it's community versus community, community versus police. So something that I mentioned that I feel is very important at an organization is if you're going to recruit a certain demographic, male, female, uh, w across you know the the race spectrum, you have to have policies in place that protect those people that you're trying to recruit. So I mentioned, um, <clears throat> with the help of my chief uh, Sylvia uh, Moyer and um, some some other employees at work, we now have a lactation policy because I when I came back out in 2017 after having my my second child. I, I was nursing her, and at the time, we didn't have a lactation policy. Well, and you, and for those of you who don't know, Tempe, Arizona is a forward-thinking city in many regards. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the uh, amazing, I can't believe they didn't have it because I'm... Well, and you know what? It's one of those things of where until you're there, right. you don't realize you need one. Exactly. And so um, the chief was very instrumental in getting that started and getting that committee put together. Does, does it say the Lindsay lactation room on it? It would be door. nice, but it doesn't. But uh, we call it a quiet room, actually, because it's, you know, our we have more female officers now than we did when I first got hired in 2009. So not everybody's going to be pregnant all the time or nursing all the time, but I figured a multi-use room exactly. would be nice because we all need downtime. You know, rather it's you work overnight and you have court in the morning and you need to get some shut eye before court or you have a very stressful day or you're involved in a critical incident and it doesn't rise to the occasion of maybe you going home or maybe you do need to go home, but you need to decompress before you get in that car and drive home. Um, you know, people who have diabetes that maybe take, you know, they have their insulin or if you're doing fertility stuff and you have hormone shots, like it can be used for a variety of different things. Um, so we got that started and that, an, an officer mentioned to me, he said that actually allowed other female officers who might have been considering leaving wow. to stay because now they have something that works for them and their family as well. So, you know, big ups to, um, you know, everybody that was involved in that because those meetings weren't always easy because no. you're talking about, to me, I'm very comfortable talking about nursing and stuff like that, but not everybody's that comfortable. We've come a long way because my mom worked for the airline mm. and you could not keep your job and be pregnant mm -hmm. back in the day. Mm -hmm. And that was flight attendants and reservations. Nobody would ever see my mother. <laughs> Well, and it's funny because th those jobs were largely female. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, so that, and you're right, we have come a long way. And, you know, but you you have to say something, too. You you have to decide what you're going to put on the line to 
you know, and it wasn't just for me that I was like, well, I'm going to selfishly have this policy put in place because it's something I need. I'm a vocal person. I come from a vocal family. And like we, we <laughs> gather and we love that about so, you. But there are other people that I've spoken to, other females that I've spoken to around the department that, you know, maybe didn't feel like they had enough confidence or even tenure to bring those type of subjects up. So I don't, I didn't mind being the voice for them because that, uh, that also helps women after me as well. And, you know, being a working mom and being a working mom as a police officer is not easy. Because your shift doesn't always end exactly on time, does right, it? Right, right, exactly. So there's things that come that come with it. And you ever say it, click, 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 click? I've got to go because my son <laughs> has a concert. Right, exactly. Doesn't work that way. Or he has jujitsu or something like that. But you have to you have to stay until the job is done. And Arizona is a is a hotbed for advancement in law enforcement. Tempe, female police chief. Mm-hmm. Yes. And she 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 made she. She knows she's got my number after the first time I met her. Yeah. She said I was holding court when I was talking to a group of people. Oh Lord. <laughs> Phoenix has a female police yes. chief. Phoenix Fire has a female chief. So yep. there are lots of places to look. And there's people at your level mm-hmm. doing the footwork mm-hmm. and helping everybody get along. Yeah. If you weren't a policeman, what do you think you'd be doing? If I wasn't a police woman. Oh, you know. I got you. I got I don't you. Know. <laughs> I'm messing with you. I'm oh, I'm a senior citizen. I'm gonna claim my Stop senior citizen. Stop it. Stop now. Do you get a discount though at Denny's? Though I get a discount everywhere. Okay, I go. well I need to come. Maybe she needs. Look at this. Look um, at this. Look. <laughs> um, I if I little. wasn't a police officer, I, man, I don't know. So my dream job. I got asked once on a job interview for Paradise Valley. The background investigator asked me if I could have. It, I'm what gonna would hold my on the table because I don't know and, what's coming. He, and, well, he told me. He says. He says, I don't want to hear a police officer. People, people say that because they think that's what I want to hear. If it's that, fine. But if it's not, say it. And I said, honestly, if my dream job would be to do voiceovers. That, w- wow. that would be my dream job. And listening to you here today, I, I could see you doing that. Well, I practice at home sometimes. It doesn't always come out that awesome. But, you know, it's, it's a dream. <laughs> police technology. Yes. We're making lots of strides in the human relations on the people side. I worry about everybody with their face buried in the computer, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm a, somebody's going to get mad at me and write in, but it's true. If you look at that computer, when it comes from the manufacturer, before it gets installed in the vehicle, it has stickers all over that lid that tell you and releases the computer company liability that says what? Do not operate the motor vehicle with the screen up. Mm-hmm. It becomes a weapon should the airbags deploy. Mm-hmm. I would also like, and, and I would love <coughs> to see a one and done. I recently was... Uh, watching Hospice of the Valley, and I couldn't believe how fast these nurses were making their stops. And I said to her, well, you have to do all that charting. You have all these heavy medications. You know, you're carrying fentanyl, opiate, and that's not why I was following them, but they, <laughs> they have all that stuff. And she said to me, she said, yes, we've had generous donations. They're very popular here in the Valley, and they'll, they'll help anybody in need. She said, this device, when I'm done, before I put this car in drive, the charting is done. Now, if anybody has a nurse or a doctor in their life, remember charting. This is the biggest part of their day, and it has to be everything that's got to be perfect, and you can't, and it's done. I would love, for those in the industry, they call it down paper. Mm-hmm. I would love for you guys to be able to finish, get back to the vehicle, do 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 do, be one and done. Because I want you heads up display. I want you focused. Mm-hmm. I want you waving at the little kids, mm-hmm. waving back, and doing all those things. So that's my. What my push at Shot Show and with the the police conventions is my push is hey let's let's work on this technology so that's a one and done. Mm-hmm. Technology wise, what would you like to see? What would I like to see technology wise? If not, on the on the report writing side, it would be nice if we some of the systems that we buy um, worked in some sort of dictation component. Even if, because, you know, like you said, if you're sitting on a patrol car, it's awkward to write a police report in a patrol car. And your head should be, should be on a swivel. It shouldn't be turned towards your device. Not good for the lower back. No, not, not good for your lower back. And not good for anything else. Nope. And having your, you know, your back or part, part, part of your back exposed to your, to your driver's side. So, you know, you shot show other... Um, other technology conferences, you see all this cool stuff. And all this stuff is cool, but I would like to see things like that and other things that are more practical 
of practical use to the to the officers. So sometimes I think we go way too up here oh, <laughs> on yeah. stuff, or we need to kind of think right in here and, and talk to the people who are using that stuff every day. You know, I feel like all of our cars should come equipped with the little cool cop thing. Oh, <laughs> the little yes. Tube that goes, you know, especially here in Arizona, that you can cool off a little bit. This is a hose that brings know? the air conditioner up and under your vest. And it's magical. It magical. is magical. Yes. So, so we've, we've kind of, you've kind of alluded to it. We're going to go real for a bit, and we're going to go deep. We're not going to go real deep because uh, 